You good? Ready. You ready, Commissioner? Okay. So, Commissioner, if you had to describe 2020 in one word, what would it be? Tumultuous. On March 31st, 2020, the NYPD and New York City Police Foundation announced the purchase of 150,000 masks, gloves, and packets of hand sanitizer for police officers on the front lines, serving the public during the coronavirus pandemic. The NYPD is going to play a major role in enforcement. That would prove to be just the start of one of the most intense, politicized, and emotionally charged years for the NYPD. What began as a peaceful afternoon protest soon turned into something more sinister as darkness descended. Several police vans from the 70th precinct were vandalized. Windows smashed in and graffiti scrawled on the outside. And then this police vehicle was set on fire. A year marked by protests. Police scrutiny would also see a major spike in crime. Let's go chronologically in order. Where were you when you first got the call that coronavirus was in New York City? I was, I was in this building in some way, shape, or form. How did you initially approach the department and all the officers who were out on the streets to prepare for what was to come? We have a pretty good medical division here, and I'm, I'm thinking right now of Dr. Eli Kleinman, our chief surgeon. He was, he was pretty direct and pretty forthcoming about the seriousness of what this was, and uh, it, it unfortunately became a reality pretty quick. Fast forward a month or two, we had 20% of the workforce out. April 9th was in fact the first time you said that 20% of cops, which is about 7,000 officers, had called in sick because they had to enter people's homes, right? They were frontline workers, they were out there. Yeah. How did that mentally start to affect the department? Um, what, what a crazy time. I'm sorry, as you're talking, I, I'm just thinking about it all coming back to me. What I will say uh, is there was um, incredible efforts by up and down through this agency, as there was um, in many, many other agencies, I'm sure, to make sure that we get the supplies for our, our men and women. We knew we knew the risks they were going through. The mayor came out, said everybody should wear a mask. The NYPD seemed to be tasked with enforcing mask compliance. And that began a bit of a slippery slope. Some videos came out of officers tackling others who were not wearing masks. Looking back, should the NYPD have been tasked with mass compliance? The truth, to be honest, um, should we have been involved in that? Um, you know, decisions were made um, in haste, and they had to be done in haste because of everything that was going on. Above all else, it was a time for everyone to just pitch in, do what you could, uh, and, and we were ready to fill that role in any way we could. While all of that was swirling came the death of George Floyd. As the commissioner of the department, did you have any idea of the social reckoning that would follow? No. You have to be honest about this country and um, you know racial inequality and festering racism, if you will, all of these things. So that it exists, but how it just, how this was the incident that triggered what came. I, Sure, it surprised me. Did you ever reflect on the department and say, maybe we do have an issue with racism or systemic racism in this department? Yeah, great question. I don't think of this agency um, as a racist police department. And um, But when I saw that video, to your question, and did I ever think about it? Absolutely, especially in the aftermath. Uh, I think you're forced to. And, and if I didn't want to think about it, or if I was um, blind to the possibility, people were going to bring it to my attention anyway. And that's really what did happen. In this Department of Investigation report that, that came out, that said that the department lacked clear, defined strategy tailored to responding to what you saw unfold on the streets. We've seen some videos where protesters were handled very violently and roughly, and that is not neighborhood policing, and we will not accept that kind of behavior. I'm sure you had a chance to read the report. Yes, I did. Did you think it was accurate? I think, you know, topics that are covered in that report need to be looked at and we can improve. To say that we had no plan, I, I think you're, you're getting a little into the uh, debatable category there, where <clears throat> we certainly plan for this. We plan extensively. We have uh, units that handle it. Um, could our training have been better? Yes. Can we move faster on coming into um, 
the modern age in many ways? Yes. Are we still probably the best trained police department in the country? Yes. When you saw some of the videos from the protests where pepper spray was used outside Barclay Center, yeah. um, and you saw the, the Lower East Side or the West Village where the individual was shoved off the sidewalk, when you look back, do you regret maybe not being more forceful when you made appearances on disciplinary actions? Yeah, I think I, I think there's there's absolutely room for improvement there. And while all of this was unfolding with the with the protests of George Floyd, then came the defund the police movement. Um, how did that affect the department? People forget that police officers are dealing with what they're dealing with at work. And then they're going home and dealing with the same problems that you have with sick family members and children that are out of school and all that too. So you went from the COVID to the, the protests and then came the, um, the defund period, if you will. And there's no getting around. That was, that was probably the low point in terms of uh, the morale. Biggest success of 2020. It's hard, it's hard to point to success. I mean, I could tell you a lot that I feel terrible about. And you talk about loss of life and people injured and, and the personal lives, um, um, just all of us getting through it. And, and by all of us, I don't mean people on this job, all of us. All of us as New Yorkers, so much good. You know, so proud of the work that cops did um, early on, before we knew about that there were protests on the horizon, just worried about each other as New Yorkers, bringing, you know, elderly shut-in people, knocking on their door and surprising them with groceries. Stories that many people don't know about that happened at every precinct across this city. So um, that's, that's what I, you know, I, I like to stay positive. Number one priority in 2021. On the crime side, it's without question, it's gun violence and, and getting our arms around that. Thank you, Commissioner.